evil, disgraced, and now dead. No heartfelt tributes, no tears for Rolf Harris. Soon I'll speak to the brave woman who helped send him to jail. The man who craved the world's love died reviled. Trust British Paints? Sure can. But the world could never trust Rolf Harris. Do you think I may leave her in your charge? Safely leave her in my capable hands. A national treasure who became a national disgrace. He took away from me that feeling that you can never be normal again. This great big wolf hound standing staring at me. <laughs> a children's favourite. Have a look at it now if I put my head in there. Artist. <laughs> entertainer. Ladies and gentlemen, Rolf Harris. I don't know how he lives his life day to day. And I don't know how he sleeps at night. He turned out to be nothing but a sexual predator. Whoa. In 2012, five years before the phrase Me Too had any meaning, Scotland Yard began investigating British entertainer Jimmy Savile over five decades of sexual assaults. Rolf, I know that the Australians aren't affected by hierarchy and things like that, but I did notice that you kissed Sir Jim's ring when he came <laughs> in. Rolf Harris became ensnared, later arrested and charged with 12 counts of indecent assault on four young girls dating back to the 60s. The youngest was just seven. What are you going to say for yourself, Harris? One of those victims spoke exclusively to a current affair. Tonya Lee was just 14 when Harris preyed on her. I was absolutely petrified and I, um, no, I just, I wanted to scream, but I didn't. Harris denied all charges. Oh, Mr. Harris, why won't you apologize, Mr. Harris? The trial was told Harris was a Jekyll and Hyde character who sexually preyed on children played with them like toys, using his fame to lure them into his perverted world. Convicted, the disgraced pedophile was jailed for a maximum of five years and nine months. He served three years. Isn't it good to be alive on a day like today? He had even encouraged children to say no to predators. It was a campaign called Kids Can Say No. The sort of touching that doesn't make you feel too good. His victims would later reveal that they didn't come forward because they thought no one would believe them. I put it out of my head for so many years. I just buried it and buried it and buried it. While he never apologised to any of his victims, in a letter he wrote to the father of one, he asked for forgiveness. I'm sickened by myself. You can't go back and change things that you have done in this life. I wish to God I could. I know what I did was wrong, but we are, all of us, fallible. How I deluded myself. Please forgive me. Rolf Harris was even lauded by royalty, painting a personal portrait of the Queen. Appointed an officer and a member of the Order of Australia, he was also honoured in the UK with an MBE, a CBE and an OBE. But convicted, the disgraced pedophile's world crumbled. Royalty, the entertainment world, his loyal fans abandoned him. Stripped of the Queen's honours, his ARIA Hall of Fame award revoked, his paintings defaced or removed from public display. He was systematically erased. On his release from prison, Harris became a recluse hiding in his home in the UK with his wife, Alwyn. He died two weeks ago. No fanfare, no public acknowledgement. A lonely, sad ending for a man who craved the world's attention. Susie Dent helped put Rolf Harris behind bars. She gave evidence at his trial. The makeup artist lives on the Gold Coast, but just happens to be holidaying in the UK right now. Susie, I imagine this has brought up a lot of emotions for you. He's dead. How do you feel about that? I don't give him the time of day. I mean, I don't, I don't see photos of him. I haven't followed his career. Uh, I don't care about him the slightest. I only found out he was dead because I was told. 
Uh, otherwise, I would not have known and, until it popped on the media. And it's just like, oh, whatever. He was old. He was old. He had cancer. He died. Funnily enough, though, um, I found out that he had neck cancer. And isn't that funny that he was speaking lies and this is where he got his cancer? Mm. Just saying. It did have an impact on my life for many years. Mm. And, uh, however, over the last... Um, last several years I've been speaking about it a fair amount so I think we when we to heal we need to speak and because I've spoken many times it's helped me on my healing journey so I didn't have as a gut reaction uh, except to really think about um, I actually thought about his wife and his daughter to be honest and what they would be going through because regardless of the monsters am amongst us they still have people women usually that uh, that love them and support them uh, so I was really thinking about um, you know my condolences mm. to both of them really condolences I mean I I just think that's incredibly big of you um, they're not the ones that molested little girls are they they're the ones that have had their lives completely upended and changed they didn't choose who their father was they had to go along with this um, um, ride that they've been on their whole lives and uh, with daddy getting sent to jail as a convicted pedophile that would have had a huge um, emotional toll on both of them I believe. Look he died two weeks ago and I think it says a lot that we're only hearing about it now. Would that have been the ultimate insult to him? You know I bet <laughs> in 2012 he would have thought he was going to get a ticker tape parade when he died because mm. the man was huge wasn't he in the world and he was the biggest fall from grace that we have ever seen in this generation. His youngest known victim was seven and you were in your early 20s when you were molested you were hired to do his makeup. What impact has that had on you? It changed my life actually. He was the last man who ever molested me and there were others because this was the 80s and um, some men really took free reign with, being, uh, with touching women when they didn't want to be touched. I had a bad day with a dirty old man. Uh, he was the last man that ever touched me without me inviting it. I got very mouthy and used the F word a lot. I got very standoffish with men but I also... I didn't wear dresses or anything tight fitted for the next 30 years of my life. I completely hid my body until I was um, 54 years old. So that is a real impact. Why did you decide to come forward, lend your voice, your story? It's brave. So when I waived my anonymity in 2019, I'd changed my life in 2017. I'd done a lot of my own internal healing. The world was ready to hear my story and it was time for me to come out. At the time, I also realised that the Me Too movement had moved ahead a long way in America, in the UK and in New Zealand, but in Australia, it had ground to a halt. And I really wanted to come out and remind Australia that it started with us, that we're buffy here, uh, that we're strong women and that it's really important that we step up, speak out and support other women uh, to empower themselves and to empower others. You saw when some of the first victims came forward that they were vilified quite broadly. Is that part of the reason why you decided to lend your voice, your story to it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I actually came forward in 2013 because uh, one of the women who was part of the case, Tonya, uh, I saw her on a current affair, funnily mm -hmm. enough. But when I saw her on national television and her being vilified by the press and being called a liar, and I watched that she was literally thrown to the wolves, I knew that she wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew that I had to come forward. I told every man and his dog over the years, uh, you know, because people, as a makeup artist, people say, who's the best person and who's the worst person? That I've ever worked with well the best person would always change but the worst person was always him and I knew that I would never work with him again so if he'd had a good time with me that day there was no chance we were having seconds that was never going to happen you couldn't pay me enough to work with the man again can I ask you this Susie over the years have you spoken to any other victims have you spoken to any recently I've had um, a half a dozen women reach out to me to tell me that they too were molested by Rolf Harris. Makeup artists as well. Over the years, I've had makeup artists from countries all around the world have reached out to me to thank me for being the voice. Uh, and uh, they've stepped up and been able to actually share their story with me for the first time. And that, that, that's a gift that someone shares their story with you. 
I mean, Susie, this is a man who was lauded for decades, yet you helped reveal the truth that Rolf Harris died nothing but a sick, pathetic abuser. Is there power in that? Yes. There is. There's a lot of power in that. I never thought of there being power at the time when I came forward. When I came forward, I was doing it for the women who were little girls. I wasn't doing it for me. It wasn't for me at all. Uh, and when I did come forward and I was part of the case, I realised that in that courtroom, all middle-aged women, all with their little girls inside them being fierce warriors, coming forward going, no more, this will not happen and we're speaking out. And together, with solidarity as women, we won. And that was amazing because I don't believe any of us really thought that we actually would, that someone with that much power and that much clout, uh, a friend of the royal family, would actually uh, be found guilty. I was proud that I had some amazing headlines in 2014. My favourite one was Australian television makeup artist dramatically stares down Rolf Harris in court. <laughs> I remember I that one. I was really pleased. And I. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I had to actually Google what stare down meant because I glared at him all the way out of the courtroom. But I really hoped that the other witnesses and other women who weren't part of this case had seen that and gone, rah, we've got a strong woman and she's been believed and they couldn't fault me in the courtroom, which was great. And I was called the strongest bad character witness for the prosecution. So um, for me, I was really pleased that that was what I was being called for them and all the other witnesses so that they would keep the faith that we were moving forward and uh, that we had a chance of actually taking this predator down. And you did. You took him down. He lost. I mean, he's been stripped of all his awards, his achievements, titles. He went to jail. I mean, you took away everything we once celebrated about this man. That, to me, was the most amazing thing, not just being in court and taking one down one man, but the, the huge effect that the case um, had on the world as a whole. Uh, and we've seen big, uh, important, strong, rich men be taken down because other women mm -hmm. have had the courage to come forward and tell their truth, and it's just spread like wildfire. And this is the change that women needed for things to happen. We still have a long way to go in changing the generational mindset of men of his age that still think women should be you know barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen um, but it's it's dying out and we need to continue to educate uh, the older generations that women have rights and how we should be treated and how they should behave but it won't happen overnight because it really is a generational mindset mm. and I believe that it's done with kindness um, and it takes time. I mean, he caused many of his victims a lifetime of pain and as you mentioned he had cancer there at the end. It's not a gentle way to go. No, no, well life, uh, karma, life does have uh, a way of getting back at you uh, and life certainly got back at him. As you said he was stripped of everything, everything, everything creative he ever did, every statue, every monument, every award, every anything was taken away from him. So he certainly, regardless of how much of a narcissist he was, would have felt that, would have felt the impact. Uh, and uh, even the judge at the time said that he was re without remorse. Mm -hmm. And I believe he continued to be without remorse. Had he shown remorse, would that have made a difference to you? Uh, no, not really, because he's an actor. So it would probably be all fake anyway. He's a serial mm. offender. He wasn't going to stop. He had no remorse. He didn't care. Mm. He sang in court. Uh, he sang one of his songs in court. You know, he wasn't, even when he was in court, he, wasn't, he did not take it seriously. Mm. Uh, the man was like, believed whatever he believed about himself, but it certainly wasn't the reality that the rest of us live by, nor the rules of society mm. that we all live by. He was in a different planet altogether. Mm. Does today give you any sort of closure, or in some ways I feel like you already have that? I do. Um, I healed uh, a long time ago and I got closure a, lot of a long time ago. Um, I'd never even done jury duty, so actually being part and responsible for sending someone to jail is a big deal. It's mm. something that sits on your heart and it weighs with you. So it was like a huge moment for me and I started to move forward. I mean, I was, what, 51? Uh, mm. So it's a long time to carry the anger uh, and the shame of some of the things that were done to me as a young woman 
woman in my life. Um, I'm grateful that that has happened and um, I know that that is how it is with many other women. Uh, they, they don't mm. tell, they feel shame and really they need to realise that it's not their fault. Mm. But there were women, and there was a woman in the courtroom at 49 who had to stand behind a blanket because she couldn't eyeball him. Um, mm. That hurt my heart that at 49 she was hiding and she couldn't actually look at him. And I knew that and was told that before I actually went in there. So um, it may have actually triggered me glaring at him the entire way out of the courtroom. Mm. And maybe I was doing it for her as well. Susie, I doubt many tears will be shed for this man. You're amazing, you're so strong, thank you. Thank you so much for having me.